Hi there. In this video, I wanted to introduce uh, microbial diversity as we begin our investigation of the diversity of life forms on Earth. Uh, we'll start with the single celled organisms, the microbial organisms, and then we'll build through all the multicellular organisms like the fungus, the plants, and then we'll end with animals. So, in terms of microbial diversity, we're thinking about microbes. Let's define the term microbe. So a microbe is any organism that you can only see with the help of a microscope, right? So these are all the single celled things that are too small to be observed with the naked eye. When we think about microbial diversity, we're gonna break microbes into four groups. So we're gonna talk about four kinds of microbes. The four kinds of microbes that we'll speak about are the bacteria, then we'll discuss the archaea. Then we'll think about a group called protista or protists. And we'll end by thinking about some fungus, some fungi that are uh, microbial. Not all fungi are. So let's go through those groups one by one and uh, think about the main characteristics we want to be aware of as we think about microbial diversity. So we're going to address each of these groups. Here I'm showing you the uh, tree of life. The tree of life, as we've discussed earlier in the course, is broken into uh, three main branches. The bacteria. All of these bacteria are uh, microbial. Okay, So all bacteria are single-celled. We'll talk about their diversity a little bit. In the middle, we've got the archaea. All of the archaea are single-celled and microbial. We'll talk about their diversity a little bit. And then the third branch is the eukaryotes. Now the eukaryotes are not all microbial. We're going to talk about some microbial eukaryotes, things called protists. Protists actually represent most of the names that are out here on the eukaryotic branch. Protists are everything except the animals, the fungus, and the plants. So these slime molds, the ciliates, the flagellates, all of these things are protists. As we move forward, we'll think also about the fungus. Some fungi are microbial, others are multicellular. So fungus sort of spans both microbial and non-microbial life forms. So we're going to think about those four groups, bacteria, archaea, and then the two kinds of eukaryotes that are microbial the protists, which have lots of diversity, all these different things, and then some of the fungus. The only other thing I want to point out as we look at this tree of life is something that the bacteria and the archaea have in common. So both bacteria and archaea are what we would call prokaryotes. These are two different kinds of cells that both lack a nucleus. So we're going to think about that cell structure as we go on. So uh, microbes include bacteria, which are prokaryotic, no nucleus. They include archaea, which are prokaryotic, no nucleus. And then we have the couple kinds of eukaryotes, protists, but they're eukaryotes, they have a nucleus. And then some fungus that are microbial, they're also eukaryotes. So let's think about these groups one at a time. Let's start with the bacteria. So the domain of bacteria are all these things, the bacteria, that lack a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. So all bacteria are prokaryotic. If we think about prokaryotic diversity, most of the prokaryotes that we know about fall into this domain of bacteria. So it's a really big group of microbial organisms. Something the most of these bacteria have in common is that they mostly have cell walls made out of a chemical called peptidoglycan. So that's a way that we group them together. There, again, there's a huge diversity of bacteria. We'll just address some of that as we look deeper throughout this chapter. I think the most important thing to um, understand about bacteria is that most of these organisms are beneficial. Most of these organisms are doing critically important things in the environment or on our body. What I worry about for the general population 
is that when they think about bacteria, they think about just the things that make them sick. So it is important to recognize that some bacteria are harmful. Some bacteria can cause disease, but most bacteria are actually beneficial. So we shouldn't sort of uh, demonize bacteria based on the fact that a few of them, a small number, can cause disease in humans. So that's bacteria. All prokaryotic have these peptidoglo peptidoglycan cell walls, but there's a huge diversity in the kinds of bacteria most of them do good, th good things, some cause human disease. What about this domain, archaea? So archaea is also um, a group of organisms that lack a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. So archaea are also prokaryotic like bacteria. But archaea are different. They don't have cell walls made of peptidoglycan. They use other chemicals. And there's all sorts of other differences that cause us to classify archaea as a separate group. We'll think more about those differences in this unit. But what's important to recognize about archaea is they were only recently discovered. The differences that set archaea apart from bacteria were actually really hard to um, find. So it took us a lot of time. We've only known that these are a separate group of organisms since the late 1970s. What's interesting about archaea is that most of these organisms are what we would call extremophiles. So they like living in extreme environments. If we look around the world, we find archaea living in really interesting environments, like environments that are particularly hot, where for a long time scientists didn't think anything would live there. We also find archaea living in places that are particularly salty, where we didn't think that life could exist in these high salt environments. Uh, we find archaea living in environments with extreme pHs, where we didn't think that many things would be capable of living. So archaea are really interesting because they inhabit these sort of strange environments on Earth. In general, because archaea live in these extreme environments, they don't tend to live on the human body. There have been some identified, but not very many. And in general, because they don't thrive on the human body, uh, they can't make us sick. So we would say, in general, um, most archaea are non-pathogenic. So we'll think more about archaea as we go. So, so far we've talked about bacteria, which are prokaryotic, and all microbial. Archaea, which are prokaryotic, and all microbial. Another set of, or another group of microbial life forms are the protes protists or protista. So protists do have a nucleus. They also have other membrane-bound organelles like the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi uh, lysosomes and things like that. So we put them in this domain eukarya because they have a nucleus. Um, protists or protista are a hugely diverse group of organisms. So protists is like a catch-all group for all the eukaryotes, anything with a nucleus, that are not either fungus, plants, or animals. So if a living thing has a nucleus, but it's not a fungus, not a plant, or not an animal, then we just say, hey, that thing is a protist. Most of the protists are single-celled organisms, um, but there's a few uh, exceptions to that rule that we can think about later on. So again, this group has a huge amount of diversity and I would like to represent that diversity with a little uh, artistic representation of some of the protists in the world. So if you look at a sample of uh, pond water or something like that from the environment, oftentimes you can find these really cool looking organisms uh, in that water. Protists have a lot of diversity again. They're really dynamic organisms. They tend to move a lot. They've got things like flagella to help them swim or cilia to help them move through their environment. So they're particularly diverse and interesting looking. And we'll think about them more throughout this unit. So microbial diversity, we've talked about bacteria and archaea. Those first two were both prokaryotic, no nucleus. Then we talked about protista. They're eukaryotic, they do have a nucleus. And the last group we'll talk about are the fungi. Fungi are also 
uh, eukaryotic and having a nucleus, but only some of them are microbial. So that's the first thing. Only some, a small group of fungus are microbial. Generally, it's the yeast. Um, things like Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is a yeast that's made, used in food production. Yeast help us make things like beer and wine and bread. So microbial fungus are super beneficial uh, and helpful. And some of them, some examples are yeast. Again, most fungus are actually multicellular. We'll talk more about them as well in this unit. So things like mushrooms and mold are things that you can see with the naked eye. Um, they form larger structures we can observe. And so that we wouldn't uh, call those microbial. Again, all of the fungus have a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. So we, we call them part of domain eukarya, but they're not protists because we can group these things all together for a couple of reasons. They all have a cell wall made of chitin. And another reason is that we group fungus together because they share this characteristic in common. They're all heterotrophic. Heterotrophic just means you need to eat other things to get the carbon from them so that you can build the molecules in yourself. So humans or animals are also heterotrophic. But fungus are different than animals because they're heterotrophic with external digestion. Animals are all heterotrophic with internal digestion. We eat food and we digest it inside our bodies. Fungus eat food, they're heterotrophic, but they digest it outside their bodies. So that's a critical difference as to why fungus are different than animals. Fungus are different than plants because they don't do photosynthesis. Again, they have to eat things to uh, get the carbon to make the molecules in their body. And they're different than the protists because uh, we group them together. They're all heterotrophic with this external digestion. They've got the cell wall made of chitin. Uh, so if we want to look at a little bit of that microbial diversity, here's just a teaser of the kinds of things we'll see. Again, there are large versions like mushrooms that we can see. They're non-microbial uh, mold as well. But then there are things like yeast and uh, other forms of the fungus that we can only observe through the microscope. So we classify them partially as microbial organisms. So that's just a quick overview of the four kinds of organisms we'll study as we study microbes. And so we'll leave it there. Um, I'll look forward to answering any questions you have in the discussion board or talking to you via email. Um, and I'll talk to you all again soon.